Hi traders, Jay Trader here, trading small cap pro. So uh, you will see now a full webinar on uh, trading errors. It will be me and uh, Bas, million dollar trader. We'll go over the setups and charts of the traders in small cap room. You'll see small caps, uh, big caps, uh, futures, options, and you will hear our process. So members, uh, this twice weekly mentoring, send the chart, we'll review them uh, based on rules, based on the playbook, we'll tell them where's the setup, where the errors, and how they can improve. So we hope that this can help you, that you can benefit from these lessons. If you like, always uh, put a like, subscribe, and join Small Cap Room. Thank you very much for following us. So good morning, everybody. I'm over here with uh, Charlie, Bas, Eric. So uh, thank you to these guys. Today we can have a webinar together. It will be, a, uh, I would believe, a good webinar. Uh, Charlie is a scalper trader in small caps. Bas is a... Uh, scalper trading in the small caps, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's an intraday and a swing trader in the big caps in option land. Also, we have Eric over here. So mentoring that is uh, uh, holding these webinars and uh, doing a great job. Uh, we have some charts to go over. And uh, I will start really with uh, the first one over here with of, uh, can you drop it, Richard? Richard, are you here, buddy? Let me see, ping in boiler room if you're here, and then I will give you the word. Let's see if Richard is with us. Okay, what's your nick, buddy? Can you drop it? Let's see, Richard. Can you drop it too? Okay, perfect. Let me find it. Okay, Richard, good morning, welcome. Morning, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Good morning, everybody. So, um, Richard is a trader. Um, uh, he did a uh, uh, pretty good evolution. Uh, we've seen his, uh, also his testimonial uh, lately uh, for what concerns his performance with uh, options. So, as every trader, he had to find his niche so the first months were, I would say hard, but that's normal because that's about studying, finding what you can uh, trade and perform correct. And over here this morning, we have uh, one of his charts on Apple. So this is a, a call over here, 152.50. So explain me first of all, um, Richard, what was your plan that morning and uh, uh, the reason why you took the trade? Uh, this was the under over. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't get it on the first candle, so I I, I waited, mm -hmm. and um, I think I took twenty contracts on this one. Yeah. Okay, so you took the, the entry uh, over here, right? Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yep, and then I three, then I sold uh, ten right away. The explosion at eight fifty zero point fifty. And we are talking about the chart over here on the one minute, exactly this uh, level over here, I mean, uh, 935, this level over here, right? Yep. Okay. So yeah, and we were we were approaching it on both now. So to the upside uh, with volume over here, we have the 10 minute chart. So we're talking about this, uh, um, this bar over here. And also we had a good trend line break. So I, I continue to explain, please. Um, yeah, so I, I saw it coming back up on uh, book map. I'm sorry, I don't have the beginning of the book map for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's cut off. It's showing the second and third trade on that one. Um, but I saw it curling back up. Uh, again, I was watching the, the 10 second candles, which makes it just so uh, perfectly clear. And, uh, and I took it. Um, it, it. It was kind of a tad early, I would say, um, but it was right on the 9 EMA on the option chart. Um, as as we started pulling up into the open level, and uh, I always try to grab it as we go up and through it, um, even if it's a tad early. Okay, uh, so you bought over here uh, uh, fifteen over here is uh, correct, or long twenty? Sorry, long twenty. I long twenty there, yeah, okay. and then I sold ten at that first red line and the and the next candle there. 
Okay, okay. So, so that was my FX floor. Why are you gonna uh, well, I, I can't really count. It, it's hard to calculate 2R on the option chart real quick. Okay, so well, I you're looking just, at the tape, right? You're looking at the price moving. You're looking at the book map of the underlying stock. So yeah, and I think what it was moving. was it was it was a resistance level near pre market high. Mm, okay, so you always have a hot key. I imagine to get out uh, as soon as you have the first stall of the move. Yeah, yeah. I uh, well, I trade off the chart, so I just uh, click uh, control to buy or alt to sell, and then uh, left click my mouse on the chart where I want it. So. One thing I wanted to ask you, and then I will ask also Boss and Charlie. Uh, first, when you sold this, try to remember, uh, you sold before we touched that resistance on bookmap or on your level two, or uh, after that it was rejecting? Uh, right as we were coming up into it, I try to take off a, a piece. Before so before we rejecting it, before to see before, it. Yeah, happen. because sometimes it rejects too fast and comes shooting back down, so. Okay. I like Bus, the, I like the selling it? string. Thank you, Richard. Boss, would you have managed in the same way? I mean, getting out half that soon? Um, what what day was this exactly? This was the fourth. This was Thursday. So okay, I'll just, Thursday. Let, me, let me look at my chart real quick. Sure. Um, okay, so the morning of the fourth. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't adding up to me, that options chart. No, yeah, I like the I like this setup. Um, what I do as far as figuring out two two R or where I want to exit uh, initially is I'm eyeballing the underlying on book map, and I'm looking basically at the low or the low of the first strong bar is kind of where my stop would be. And then if you're entering at the open then I'm just saying, I'm looking at it from like a dimensional standpoint and saying, okay, from the low of this bar to where I entered, when price is two times that, I'm gonna take some off for sure. And that's the key with options. You gotta sell into strength on options because they can they reverse so quickly. So you'll be a lot more successful. You know, There's a temptation to get some size in there and go for the big win, but you gotta sell into strength on options. That's probably my number one recommendation if you're playing these under overs that's, but as far that's what i try to do every single time is as it's pushing as that bar is pushing or i make a new high and that um, i i place my orders above price on the on the chart and i let it come up and fill me so i, right. I try to fill into strength that way but i think sometimes my first take profit where i i, I really want it to be up two r is sometimes more around one r just depends on what i'm seeing on on book map at the time yeah, and I, I wouldn't be afraid to take it off earlier. You know, that's where kind of reading the tape comes in. It's yeah, not uncommon. It's not uncommon to see these things come back and either test the pre-market low, or you'll see like a seventy percent pullback. And so, if if you're holding too long and not taking profits into strength, you're you're not going to be consistent. And then you'll get these really deep pullbacks. Like I'm looking here, just eyeballing it. You know, it comes all the way under the high of the first bar, and then it bounces. Um, but you know, that's a, like a 60% pullback from the high. And if you're trading size with options, you know, and you're looking at your P and L, you're going to have mm -hmm. a hard time, you know, controlling your emotions. So, and I don't use hotkeys. Um, I know Jay does, but if you're trading these kinds of, of trades, you know, depending on your platform, definitely, uh, you need to be able to be quick or you're going to get crushed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, what is the best broker for you uh, for option? Because uh, I received so many messages. I mean, I find personally that I'd be as good, but what is your personal preference? I've never used hotkeys per se, and I've had trouble at the open, you know, being quick and then toss. I, I've used toss and I've been frustrated. You know, they, they, they have a hard time staying up with the, with the uh, high volume at the open. Mm -hmm. um i have a tasty trade account they're they're okay but i haven't traded i i can't recommend that but i can tell you that i know young matt i worked with him quite a bit he loves ib um and so i'm not as familiar with ib but i think for this type of trading you know going off what he told me it's probably one of the best yeah and they have a very good charts for options at least i prefer them versus uh toss so let's continue over here with the trade. So Richard, you are over here selling into the strand. My only suggestion in this trade is not uh, deliberately, 
uh, sell at two R, uh, but look uh, for uh, a first stall on the tape. Okay, so it's okay. true. I always say uh, my first exit when I trade big caps, especially on the over at the open, so it's fast and I can have a pre market rejection um, yeah. or options. I want to take at least two R. But if you see that the tape is still moving strong, if you see follow through, wait a little bit more because that two R can become three or four. So the next time you have a stop, those R that today you gain more will cover your stop and still put you in a win. Understand. Now, this is the second trade over here. So what was the reason to take the second trade? I can see over here, it's a pullback, right? On, yeah. the, on the J lines, right? That's the J line you, you use. Yeah, it pulled back, we hit the J lines and I took it on the nine EMA. As, as we curled up. Okay, and we have seen that in the last months is something that you're playing a little bit more personally, I've seen that. So the use also- We even had put it in my uh, mentoring plan, 90 EMA well, curl ups and under overs. Exactly, because we passed to, uh, tra from trading, I believe only uh, under overs and the curls also to incorporating uh, with the, str the strong moves, also the use of the 90 EMA, correct? Correct, and I think the 90 EMAs are easier even than the J-line curl up. Yeah, yeah. It gives you, let's say, uh, a very good uh, timing of the entry, a low risk. The only thing is you need to be traders pretty, uh, pretty fast. fast. Pretty fast, yep. exactly. Yeah, you can't expect the home runs on them. But think about it. Those trending stocks, they, they, they go. And sometimes I, I move my trailing up a little too high and, um, sometimes the option price will actually come and just suck me out of the trade. I've had it to a point where I could have a stop at say 60 cents and it's taken me out at 65. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it just does that sometimes, but I'm trying to get better at trailing, okay. especially when I get in early. Cause yeah, personally, uh, when I trail, I use three main guides. One is the, really the, the flow. So the order flow that I see on book map, one is if I'm trading, let's say, uh, a very short term, the uh, 90 MA on the one minute. And also the uh, J lines uh, and a subsequent, um, I would say, structure of higher lows breakdown. Uh, if I still use, I would say, um, I have a vision for a longer uh, trade. Uh, let's say mRNA yesterday, my trailing was basically all with the lower highs and with the 90 May. Now, I don't know if I can get back the trade. Uh, let me see. But that's just like, I would say, an example. Yeah, over here. This is what we did yesterday in the room. This was an example of uh, over here, how to trail with lower highs, lower lows. So each time we were going down, uh, after this uh, break over here, we are forming lower highs, then lower highs, then lower highs, then lower highs. So for me, that's a very good way how to trail. Okay, so you always bring down your trailing. So you always lock in profits. And if it comes back up, then you cut the last remaining part. That doesn't mean don't take partials when it's going down, especially the previous low, but at least when you're going up, you will see the reversal fast and then get out from your trade. Okay. Yeah. Is that one minute or three minute? One minute, one minute, one minute. That's the one minute and uh, one minute J lines, one minute J lines, mRNA, yes, and the gap down works simply per perfect. We had I want to gap say something, things. what Richard was talking about on the EMAs. Um, I kind of look at EMAs and time frames kind of synonymous. You know that if, if you go out in time, then the, the corresponding EMA is lower. Mm -hmm. But one of the best trades is if you have a good catalyst and you have a strong stock, and I like to look at the daily, make sure I've got some sort of a daily setup. This is where kind of the swing trading helps me because I know what the swing setups are, what I'm looking for on a swing setup. So that's kind of my differentiator on picking stocks because when the market's strong, you're going to have tons of stocks that are set up on the under over. But if I have a really good daily setup, where I'm sitting on an EMA and I like the daily, that's kind of my discriminator. But once I get in there, like the under over is really tough. If you're having trouble with the under over, I would look for a stock that has a catalyst that comes out of the chute really strong and then look for that first uh, flag, like something two, three bars into the nine EMA or the 21, and then it will take the next leg up. 
Now, eventually that stock later uh, will pull back to like the J lines on the one minute. But a lot of times these stop, strong stocks, if you don't catch the perfect under over, you can catch that first flag against the nine or the 21 on a one minute chart. That's absolutely what we saw on NVIDIA traders, which had the very big daily breakout. There you go. Perfect. And that and we see a uh, first pullback over here or even... I like like bus, for example, in the five minutes are two or three bars of pullback. For me, that's my way to go. When I see high volume like this kicking in and I see that we are above the pre-market high, then I like these. Apple this week, not this week that we passed, but the week before did the same exact thing. Breakout, hold that pre-market high, consolidate above and then push. So you know that you have an established strong trend. I see a lot of traders fighting on something like, for example, this, which for me is really nonsense. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Trader, they are fighting in a day like this, where Tesla is not going anywhere, didn't break even the pre-market range, is still inside the previous day range, and they're trying to buy each dip over here long, only because this is a Jalen's Jalen's Jalen. That's microscoping, and you're not gonna make any kind of money. You have to wait for those trends. You have to be selected. You cannot trade every single day only because you think that you have to make money every single day. Select your trades and you make the big money on few stocks. I trade big caps two, maximum three times a week. My trades are selected. I traded Apple two days ago. I traded mRNA yesterday. And I traded NVIDIA, what, uh, four or five days ago or something like that. But that's my point, okay? Can you go back to that NVIDIA real quick? Yes, five minutes or one? Uh, that one where you drew those flags. Oh, uh, that was a five, buddy. You want a five or one? Uh, it was, I think it was that, I don't know. It was the one that you had drawn the line on where I was talking about it bouncing off the nine EMA. Okay, let's put, let's put that one second. So it probably doesn't matter. It probably looked the same. Yeah, just more bars. Okay, this one over here. One, yeah, yeah. Oh, so if you one draw- one. Sorry, one minute. So if you see that bar, that hammer bar, like the open bar, if you draw a line from there to the top of where you have that flag, from there to the top, or uh, no, to where the, the first pullback of the flag, on the, like the sixth bar, the, the first red bar. Yeah, like right there. And if you duplicate that line and draw it from the low of the flag, this is how I pick my targets. See how they're the same length? When I get to that second one, I'm selling there. And then I'm definitely taking profits there. And then if it sets up again, I'm looking for that again. And that's, that's how I pick my targets. That way I'm selling into strength, but I'm not just randomly selling, say, you know, looking at my P&L and selling. So I have a target, but that's how I keep my full size on early on in the trade, especially on these under overs, because you have massive you have massive R to R on these early trades because if you're right, you got very little risk. And this is why Jay and Mama love these trades. You can get massive R to R and you don't want to be selling off your size on the first push. So when you're right, you got to be able to figure out a way to A, sell into strength, but keep your size on. Exactly, exactly. It's basically, that's pure technical analysis. Even when you take a uh, head and shoulder, remember what you started in the manuals, so you take, that, you take that high to the neckline and then you put that uh, distance from the neckline to the downside and that is your target, your first target. So a uh, very correct way how to approach the market. I like analysis and I like really much the technicals. Uh, a question over here from uh, Irvine. Um, what would be volume requirement meaning for a video to sustain moves like this? And he's asking this to probably to me or to you, boss. Okay, so we have been talking about volume, especially with Tesla. And I said that Tesla requires 100K minimum, okay, to have these strong moves. Look over here. You can see right away when NVIDIA, let's look this day. NVIDIA has a maximum over here of, uh, as sorry, an average of around 80 to 70K per minute volume. The day that it moves, look how the volume is. So you see an average over here of 140K, 150K. So that's your answer. Everything above 150K. Go to check this parameter in the previous moves and you will see if that is realistic or not. I can tell you that when I started trading, 
with Jay, that was my number one question is, do I wait for the volume to come in? And, and looking back now, I don't wait for volume. I take the price, I take the pattern, and then I'm looking for volume to confirm that I'm right, but I'm not going to wait for the volume because these stocks are going to move first. The price will exactly. move and then the volume will follow because there's so many chasers. And if you're waiting on volume, you're going to crush your RR. Exactly. It's totally true, traders, because even in the small cap plan, we had PTPI, OLB, they start moving often before we have that volume. So over here, this, okay, started right away to have volume, okay? But often a lot of these moves like OLB, IINN, Agri, and so on, they start, let's say, maybe at 40, 50% without volume. And then you know what? Volume comes and it's too late to enter the trade. So use the technicals and then you enter the trade, okay? Like over here, low volume on this first move over here and then volume comes later. Actually, still not the, the right uh, setup to show, but I hope you, you understand. Let's see, IINN. And this we're talking about around 10 days ago. Yeah, this day over here, you see what I mean? The first part of the move has very low volume over here. And then only when we're really uptrending from here, you start to see the explosion of volume. But the long consolidation where I want to enter is up here, okay? So you see a maximum of 300K, 400K per volume. Only after the break, you start seeing 1 million plus. So this is a big consolidation, run cup pattern, just at the J lines. I like to enter over here. When the 90 May reclaims the VWAP, curl up with the j -lens, and then you take the first. You can always recycle and re-add to the j -lens, but you have to enter in this section over here. If you enter with the mass up here, it's too late. At least you have to wait for a pullback. You cannot simply enter over here because your feel will be bad. And don't follow those gurus. They will tell you, oh, over 750, buy, and we'll look for eight. Over 850, buy, okay. How many times they tell you that? And then boom, all the way down. So be smarter. Do your, really, your whole homework. Buy the dips, okay? And then look, as Bus was saying, for the tape, for the order flow to confirm that your trade is going. The, the things I look for before volume is you want the volume drying up. Vo no volume is actually the tell for me when the volume gets super quiet and then the price is not doing what you would think it would be doing. So it's the price is going down and volumes drying up. Like on that second move there where he drew the rectangle where you don't want to be in, but the pullback prior to that, the next one, you no know, down at where the hammer's on your red line there. Yeah, right there. You see the volume there dries up to nothing. You put in a hammer there. That's the tell for me. You start to see a little bit of volume there because that's the turn where the buyers are holding the price. It's like uh, absorbing. As soon as you see the higher low there and then you break like a three bar high, that's where I'm starting to come in. That's a time. Yeah, exactly. But look at the volume, it goes to nothing. So really the volume, the zero volume to me is more important on the entry. And then when the volume comes in, that's the chasers. And I'm looking to exit into strength off a measured move. And then at the peak, you look for the exhaustion where typically you'll get, a. this isn't a good example, but on a real exhaustion, you'll get a super high volume bar. Price will continue to go higher and you'll get that last volume divergence and you exit when you get the lower volume and the higher price. Yeah, right there. Volume divergence traders. Yeah, so you, that's where I use high volume on the move when you're right. You can get out because usually price will go up two, three, four bars in a row. It's a perfect example. You see that all the time. Exactly. Inside bar, boom, drops. Okay, let's go to, thank you, Richard, for now. Uh, let's welcome. go to another chart. Uh, let's see if we have Mark Law. Mark, can you write in boiler room if you're over here? Okay, so what's your nick, buddy? Mark Law, got it. Okay, I will also give the word over here to Charlie. Hey, how are you? Good morning, Mark. Uh, thank you, buddy. So glad to have you here. Charlie, you're here with us, bud? Can you hear me nice? Okay, okay. Yeah. yes, we can hear you. So this is uh, 
food for Charlie. As we said, Charlie is a scalper trader, uh, intraday trader on small caps. Over here, we have Mark Law. So Mark, uh, first, please explain a little bit about your trade. Uh, first of all, what was this uh, stock? PTPI. Um, this is, yeah, PTPI, I think on the third. Okay, so let's yeah. take one second on the third. I want to see what was the environment. So PTPI on the third. Okay, so this day over here, basically we had a stock that, yeah, what we were watching before also, a stock that around 938, 940 broke the pre-market high and was always above the pre-market high. So a huge amount of volume over here. Okay. Tell yeah. me why you chose this stock to short exactly over here and what was your intention? Um, I've been really liking stocks that have extended a lot because I think, you know, they give me the best range in regards to making money where if I were to short something in the beginning of the market open, it's harder to tell whether volume will come in all of a sudden or not, mm -hmm. where compared to after watching a huge extension like PTPI and watching buyer's exhaustion occur and then seeing a huge uh, fall like that first one and then that sec second one, I, I like getting in on the fact that, you know, buyers are tired of trying to get into it and getting trapped. And so I take, I like to take the back side of this. Okay. I can see over here, a very good management, no trades, right? And why are you short over here? What was your risk? Um, this one, uh, the reason why I decided to share this one was because I wasn't really happy with this trade. Um, I'm under the PDT. And so I'm limited in regards to recycling shares. Uh, and so, I was partialing in regards to that first short, uh, mm -hmm. hoping that, that J lines would work, but I was also expecting it to break just in case. So that's why I only did one fourth size on that. I'm a position trader, so I'm not really, uh, I don't really think like a scalper, so uh, correct me if I do something wrong. But I was looking for that, either the J lines or looking for that previous relative high, which the one you marked in, this one, okay. 340. Um, and so when it couldn't reach that, I shorted it twice around that area. And at that point, um, my risk level is around 340, but uh, it was a bit loose for my liking. Mm -hmm. And then when they went down and the bounce with smaller volume, I thought this was the end of it. I didn't think it would be prolonged much. So I shorted it the last time for a full size. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it decided to move up again, I think. And then this time it broke off with a little bit higher volume than the relative volume mm -hmm. to the left of that. And so I was a little bit scared on that, but it tried to do a cup to, and try to break the 340 but with smaller volume. And so it, I, I was seeing weakness still, but at that point already, you know, it broke my risk level. I should have at least cut off a bit so I could have some room to wiggle um, with my stop loss or cut it off completely. But I didn't because I kept, you know, I had the original thesis, but as soon as that broke, I started creating a new thesis over and over again. And I don't think that was really good of me to do. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to ask over here just one, one thing. I want to ask over yeah. here, Charlie. Charlie, would you have managed the same position the same way? Um, if you are, let's say, in over here, what would you have risked that level over here of the previous high? Yeah, a little uh, that, that high, uh, maybe a little bit more because you know, uh, they are waiting uh, for us to stop just above this level. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I give a little an extra cents. On the maybe depending on the size, of course. But if we are adding not the entire position in one shot, but several several addings, I always uh, try to add or try. I'm trying to wait, okay, because I know they are waiting for the stops to be here, mm -hmm. and then when we see these spikes, because the most of the the stops are executed, and then it's going down a lot. So I'm ready there to 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 even to add more. Uh, waiting this breakout of this uh, 340 something 
mm-hmm. uh, waiting uh, to see this kind of a spike, and then I react even more. And um, but yeah, I, I will add more pieces probably around there. Okay, okay. Um, I'm. I think uh, like Charlie traders. I don't want to be in early, especially in this market that gives so many fake outs. And um, I like to see things with my charts. So I'm going to show you over here. Um, Mark. Yep. Um, you see over here that we have the, I would say the darker color mm-hmm. below the uh, bright one, right? Yep. So that means that the short term trend is, um, uh, is above the, or prevails on the long term trend. Look when yep. things shift over here. What do you see? The opposite, right? So you see that. I will zoom in. You see that for the first time, we have the short-term trend below the medium-long-term trend. And that's yep. the way, that's the point. That's the point that you have to take the backside. So this, uh, okay. So you can see a first part of our chart where the J lines until here, they show you that this is the front side of the move. Right. And it's not bad. You didn't enter into the front side, which is very good. You did, you waited over here. You didn't enter. Yeah. You enter on the second phase, which is the consolidation, or in this case, distribution lateral phase. Then we have a third one, which is the fade. Okay. 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 So that is. And we can see that the high volume over here and then the low volume, and we cannot really base ourselves on this because if we have an accumulation and this will push, the volume will reclaim as well. So yeah. let's wait more for these kind of technicals like this. On a five okay. minute chart, you'll see then even more confirmation because as I always tell you, when the bright one is above the dark one, you don't short buddy. And then you see over here the uh, the reverse of the side. Exactly. Also, okay. also what we can see over here, uh, they were trapping midday, both long and short. And how I know that they are trapping? Because they use basically the web as your trap. Uh, Charlie before was saying that. Okay, Charlie was saying about this. So he's waiting for that reaction. He's not trading this mid. This is a mid range. He's trading more if in the mid range you have a stuff and then he's shorting over here. So you want to see one side trapped, but over here they're trapping both sides, right, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's hard for me over there to take a direction. I wouldn't know what to do. You, Charlie? No, this is the theoretical. Sometimes I have a little form of, yeah, you are totally right. Exactly. Okay. Are, Jay, what are those two uh, EMAs that you said you like to cross over? What are those? Uh, so on a one minute chart, the 72 and 89, so Jay Lance, uh, which uh, like Eric's saying in the room, uh, which on a five minute chart, they become the 14 and 17. Okay. Okay. I got you. Okay, traders. Uh, Mark, anything else that you want uh, an explanation for? Yeah, um, real quick too, in regards to volume or book map, how do you balance which one to put more weight on in regards to book finding map. the back side? Book map because like volume, besides the volume diversion that Bus is saying, is not really uh, showing me any possible picture, okay? Uh, with book map, I can see instead what I have already, let's say I'm, uh, I'm long. What I have already over here is resistance. So I have an edge. It's not that I can see the future, but I see already who is waiting me there for the ambush. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So I would like to go over the chart of bus and then the chart of uh, Charlie. Uh, let me see if I can find the chart of bus. Bus, was this one over here? It was just uh, lucid on Friday. Okay, what about this stock has been crazy. This stock is really has been crazy. So huge amount of uh, uh, range and uh, tells us a little bit more about over here. I saw that you marked some spots with the volume. Yeah, so I, I haven't really traded this stock. You know, I know it's a SPAC and I know it's hyped on Wall Street bets. 
and I know Tesla's at all time highs and I know they have a nice EV. And so I kind of put all this stuff in the back of my head. I like to know what I'm trading. So I, I know they're making, they're getting started, ready to make real cars. Supposedly their battery goes farther than Tesla. And so there's a lot of hype, a lot of range, liquidity. You know, these are all things that I'm thinking about before I even consider a stock. And then I look at the market and I go, okay, the market's strong here. We had a bunch of distribution. People thought the market was going to break down then it reclaimed and then it's been ripping. So I go, okay, we're in a bullish market. I got a stock here that's liquid and it's in a sector I like. And so uh, Friday, I wasn't even planning on trading this stock. And you know, it's best to have a plan and stick with your plan. But sometimes if I see a, a trade, I'll take it. And so I was watching this stock and you see in the morning it goes down, which is this is what I call the short trap reversal. And I, I traded this with Alex. Alex knows this because Alex and I traded like several months together and we nailed this sucker uh, on every stock. You know, we have like a little algorithm that helps us. But anyway, so it trades underneath, you know, down. And then what happens is you see it come up on, I don't, this is a one minute chart here. The cyan or the light blue is the 7289 on a one minute chart. The red band is a three minute 7289. And then the little purple dashes is the 200 on the one. And then the gold band is the five minute. So if you look at the open there, it, it opens weak and then it puts in a higher low. And then it reclaims the one minute, the one minute right there. And it goes sideways. And where you see those first white squares of volume where I have the oval circled, that's the entry for the what I call the short trap reversal. Well, I missed that. And so I put it in the room. I was like, oh crap, I missed Lucid. But I would have entered there as soon as it crossed over that the yellow dash line. That yellow dash line is the 200 on the five. And so I know, yeah, right there, that's the entry. That's a, I love this setup in a bullish market, but you got to make sure A, the stock's above the 200 on the five, and you got to make sure the market's strong. And so we had those and I said, oh crap, I missed it. So then I see, look at the volume there. I mean, that's telling you this thing's got some power. And so you're, you're trying to assess, hey, is this stock, is there more left in the tank if I miss the trade? I'm not going to chase it. I used to chase these things. Jay knows, he used to look at my charts. And then when it, if it was a weak market, these things will fail. So you got to put all that together so that you make sure you have the edge. So once I see those white squares on there is a study that Carl Fred gave me, and I'm glad to share it. But basically what that's looking at is looking at the volume increasing by 30% over the prior bars. So those white squares are telling me volume's increasing. You can obviously see it at the bottom. So I, I don't chase it and I go, okay, I want to take this trade somewhere. Where am I going to take it? So I put in the room, hey, one minute bouncer coming. And the red line's VWAP. So you got the one minute and you got VWAP right there. So right there, I'm calling this thing's going to bounce. So I look at the super liquid. I think the 40s were trading. It's a Friday. So I love Fridays because you can put on some massive size for cheap. The 40s were trading at like 67 cents. So I put them on there. Taking them off. The gray area is zombie time you want to call it that's middle of the day but here you got volume and the market's moving so i'm not afraid to trade in there if you got the volume but look it kind of peters out and so coming into the afternoon it comes down into the three minute j lines and then right there that's what i call food truck time this is 10 15 my time this so that's uh, three hours ahead so that's 1 15 new york time that's when the traders are coming back from lunch and I've been in New York. They go down the, these tall buildings. They go out to the trucks. They eat their food. They go back yeah. up and they trade. So I'm, I'm waiting for them to come back. And then you see it starts creeping up. So I held in here on my options. I actually was sitting, you know, it's kind of risk to zero for me. And so I see these higher lows coming in and then it moves up to the prior high. You see how it fails right at the, at the high from the zombie time. And then I see in higher lows coming in here and I'm hanging in there. And then this thing just rips. And then I end up making like 160% on those options. But, you know, for me, that's a risk to zero. But the only reason I'm hanging in there is the volume I'm seeing, the relative strength, all of that stuff together. I go, this thing feels like it's going to have more in the tank. Um, but those levels, you'll see on the first, so you have the short trap reversal setup. That's why I like to show this one. This one is so powerful that it doesn't even really flag and bounce off of the 9 EMA. And then it comes in to the one and bounces. And then you'll see this a lot. You're not going to get a three minute or five minute bouncer until the afternoon on a strong stock. 
if you have something bouncing on the three minute in the morning, it's probably not that strong because the strongest stocks are riding the nine and the 21 and then they bounce on the one. So I like the three minute or five minute holds or maybe a trap underneath and a reclaim and then look for the market strength in the afternoon and then I'll play off of those levels. So I, my primary trades when I'm day trading, I still use all of Jay's setups. I like the short trap reversal, which is shown here. I like the J line curl up. I like the under over or the first flag off of the nine EMA. And then I love these three minute bouncers in the afternoon, but on stocks that have relative volume. So I'm looking for like one and a half to two times its normal volume by that point in the day and have a real catalyst that I understand. And um, I, those are the types of day trades that I take mostly. It's, it's, it's these measured move curl ups off of J lines, the one or three, depending on the time of day. And then I love this short trap reversal setup on a good stock in a good market. Yeah, the same thing, traders, you can see it over here, just related, for example, to a small cap. So it's the same exact thing that Bus is showing you. Um, we have a morning open, right away they pop. And over here, what happens? They trap so many long traders, okay? So the bull trade over here are trapped. Over here, probably this is even a Ted pump, okay? And they're going down. Generally, when they go down, and they will consolidate for a long time will be around the for a small caps five minute j line and then you start seeing this nonsense over here then you start seeing the price a little bit more clear so you start seeing really a tighter um i would say over here remember the flag micro flag and over here a small cup and you start to wait for the breakout you don't actually need often to buy over here in a breakout. You can even wait the dip and then to buy when this thing is rising already with volume. And over here you have really the big hands absorbing all the seller that we have. And the majority of these sellers are the poor traders, retailers that they bought in the morning. And what happened? They're selling below the open level, which is this level over here. The big hands are absorbing. So they're making money. And when they push it, these that stop, they come in over here and over here and they will be stopped again. So if you don't know, <clears throat> sorry, if you don't know how the manipulation works and to not chase the traders, uh, I would say the furus, the gurus, the, the alerts, you don't have any kind of way to make money in the market. Know what this can happen. This happens so much. This is called over here, gap and extension play you will have a popping field open often. And then this long accumulation always happens when you have this micro float, when you have ideally high institutional ownership, and they're trying to make over here, sellers jump in, creating fake breakdowns. You see over here, the fake breakdowns, but instead what they're doing, they're buying on purpose after those fake breakdowns. So there's, it's also like the reactive trading that Charlie was saying before. And then they break and they trap again. Look, they after over here, they have an offering, boom. So again, one of those stocks with small float, flow rotation, maybe institutional ownership, and then they need cash badly, the dilution on, they have to pre-market, boom, they done. Makes any sense, traders? Okay. Uh, Bus, you wanted to say something more about your stock? Uh, no, no, well, I was just going to mention one other thing, you know, a lot of time you see these technical patterns in books and they, you know, a lot of that stuff doesn't work <laughs> when you have manipulation and everything. So like the one I see a lot is like these pennants. It's real easy to drive, draw these lines and make a pennant. And if you start watching enough stocks, you're going to start seeing these games and they'd like to break them down and then reclaim. And so a lot of setups that look too perfect, I'm leery of. Like a lot, a lot of times you'll see an ascending triangle that's formed over several hours. And you're like, this thing's going to break out and just rip. Like Air, Airbnb on Friday is a good example. The stock was already extended. And I, would, I came in trying to take the 205s. And that was a mistake because um, it had just, when you see a long consolidation and a perfect ascending triangle, a lot of times you're going to see these games where they break it down and then a reclaim. 
And so that a lot of trades, I like to see the pattern break down and then have a reclaim immediately. And to me, that makes the pattern stronger. But that's kind of an advanced thing. I mean, you have to be able to recognize the patterns in the first place. But a lot of times you're going to see these games played around these patterns because they know where your stops are. And so, you know, if you're trying to play a perfect pattern with a super tight stop, you're going to get stopped out all day long. But so I would recommend, you know, it just takes hours and hours of watching these games being played. I mean, Jay's a master with the manipulation that goes on in the small cap world. And that's that was frustrating to me because I never really got it. Um, but it, these games are played. So if you're trying to play these perfect little patterns and expect them to not break your lines, I don't think that's too realistic. And you can see over here, traders, this is Pitten. So morning open. And then you have over under at the gate. Boom, long strapped and unwinds. So one of the, the patterns. That can uh, be really hard for people doing under overs on big caps. You'll see this a lot. Jay's so fast. Jay used to make a profit. No, Jay, Jay is not faster, for example, than Charlie or uh, faster than my wife. But, I, but on the I open, a lot of times we would trade the same stock and the same entry and he'd make money or break even and I'd lose my ass. And I'm like, wait a second, maybe I need hotkeys. Yeah, but then uh, then <laughs> bus makes more money with the swing. So there's no competition. <laughs> But uh, we have another chart traders uh, who wants a little bit more. Um, no, no, in boiler, if you're still here, anybody who wants it more? Oh, okay, so they wanted more. We're gonna offer over here, Charlie. So let me find Charlie. Charlie's back with us. Charlie, over here. Yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. I'm okay, so. You send me this chart over here, right? Yeah. And uh, this one over here. Uh, which one do you want to start from? Uh, okay, that one. Okay. So wh what is, not what stock is this? What is this? <laughs> this is a Christmas tree. So- oh, Explain uh, us what is a Christmas tree. <laughs> no, I don't even remember which stock was this one. But the, the first thing that I'm trying to get is uh, the areas right? The uh, I can tell you what this is. This is a for three dollar. This is uh, what the other day stock uh, that we trade ACDI. Uh, let me check. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. HCDI. I uh, remember just the confirmation, the conformation of this spike yeah. over here that right away from the three. Okay, yeah. explain what happened, buddy. Yeah. So the first things that I like is to find the area. What do you? Typically, what we use, right, is as soon as we see a gap, we are trying to gosh, gosh, is it this? Well, anyway, we tend to find the area uh, where to start to show, right? Here, I was, um, I like to do the same as Bass. That thing about the, uh, to draw the line and then copy the line for the next level. I don't mm -hmm. know if, uh, I like to do as well that thing because many, many, many times uh, works. I mean, probably is involved, few not just involved from this type of things. So here, what I, was, what I was playing is exactly this top, the previous top, the previous high. I was thinking even that my level, I have a level of, I, I remember it was 310, 310 mm -hmm. was my level of entry because of the historical volume. But I was trying, you know, as a pre market, um, because probably, uh, you know, uh, just a small try, I was trying the previous high, you know. So then I start the first, these uh, pink arrows, I was trying here. I know my, my risk, my, my risk was the previous high. So based on this risk, I can put my size. So easy, no need to think too much. And then as, I start, um, as soon as I start to see, uh, pushing volume and then uh, going to the previous high, I stop out. So then, yeah, those those lines is it was my next level, my next next level of entry. So you basically, well, Charlie, this is important for new well, traders. You basically put lines on your chart to help you take the scalps, right, to start the trade. Always, because otherwise I'm on the on the moment, on the fears of the moment, I'm lost. So I'm trying always on my charts in TOS to put some lines just to not be lost in the middle of the fight. So always I know my areas where to stop, where to add. And then in this area in between 80 and 3, because I'm not full size from the beginning, 
because I like to enter, let's say, if I have uh, uh, 10 um, um, uh, bullets, bullets, bullets mm -hmm. uh, I try uh, uh, to, to add in and out, in and out scalping, you know, just to, mm -hmm. okay, maybe just to find a better price. I don't mind to take out something on the way down. So I like to play a little bit on this, this, this in between this area, okay? But my, my hard stop, I think was 305, giving this uh, row number plus something, just in case it's a fake breakout, like we see here, exactly. We see a fake breakout on three. So that thing what happened is that because, you know, the big buyers or the big institutionals, they know that most of us, most, most of the retailers, they, they are going to stop at three. Um, that's what happened. All the stops are executed in between. That's for me, it's beautiful also because the three, we had $2.97, uh, something like, if I remember correctly, 12 million of war, uh, warrants. And yeah. then also we had around uh, 15 or 20 millions. Maybe I can be wrong with the, yeah. with the amount of an S1 uh, price at three. So yeah, yeah. we had to wait for this level mainly. And this is really where where over here, I believe that Charlie attacked strong, right, buddy? Yeah, what I like to do is just in these numbers, if I see, you know, the, the, the three is a row number, in 98, 97, 99, I put my orders uh, with my full size there, risking these two, three, four, five cents, you know, some, some you need to leave some space. But probably I will be full size this, this, uh, with these two pink um, arrows. And the risk is nothing. The risk is one hour. I mean, it's nothing compared with the- with the Possible outcome, yeah. With Emma, because the first thing when I enter in a stock, I know more or less how much I'm going to win because my, my two stops are the 200 Emma's. So, um, and because I believe on that, I more or less, I know how much I'm going to lose because to win, everyone knows. If you think on the win side, everyone is happy, but you need to control your, your risk on the, on, the lose, on the lose one. So in this area, I was scalping in and out, in and out, in and out, always uh, having in mind is three, three or five, three, 10, you know? And then as soon as I start to see the fail, well, it was, uh, okay, uh, the trade is done. And then I start to, uh, yeah, we add, uh, take out on the areas, on the G lines. And then when I see that, that breaking, I take out more, you know, some areas. To be honest, I have a little bit of FOMO on the first, um, yeah, that one, those ones. I should wait to the J lines. Yeah. Exactly. I should wait. But anyway, uh, I, I was so convinced that this stuff was going down. I mean, so, you are pretty up over here already. Let's say you made like already, I don't know, a huge amount of, yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the trader is not that he was risking all the capital of the morning, okay? So important, it's not full size trade over here. No, just my mortgage. I put my mortgage in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but uh, it's to be honest, it's like a it's like a ABC out on the J line, even the the BWAP. And just wait if he's yeah i mean just need to wait then it, exactly because we see, patient exactly we see we have the same levels i mean this is the pre-market high yeah and then we bounce the pre-market high we have vwap and zayla at the same time as target then we reject from that pre-market high and vwap and then we can recycle this time at the vwap yep. over here sorry the zayla lines over here we have the three whole dollar number and each time they dip, they dip in the previous support over here. So you see traders, we don't have like so many levels that you have to understand. We have one, the $3, two, the pre-market high. And we can say another one maybe over here on the slope. That's it. That's really it. So if you can trade around this, it's already like part of the equation. Yeah. These small rings in the middle of nowhere are more emotional on the way down, where I took out a big position on, is on 200 Emma and j -Lite. The other ones are more, uh, let's say, emotional. I want to get take, take out something. Yeah, yeah, That's I can understand that. Uh, let's see, you also send a second chart, correct me if I'm wrong. 
Yeah, probably yes. Okay, uh, let me get it up again. Yeah, yeah, so a, this one. Uh, yeah, but the one, what I sent it, ah, because I was waiting. Yeah, that one was uh, G, uh, F, Alpha, Italy, the 3 of November. If yeah. That one more or is the same. I I think uh, we're waiting for the push. Uh, I saw some uh, historical levels or volume levels around this area. Uh, the risk is there. It's ten cents. If we start to enter at three twenty, our level is three three thirty. Mm -hmm. So just wait, just wait. And this is yeah. one minute, but probably in five minutes, uh, probably he went to the five minutes. And uh, yeah, I for I did an area on the push to be what uh, almost at the end. Yeah, here because because I was thinking to push more, uh, so I didn't add, but I added later. This is uh, let's say FOMO, but okay, a conviction that this stock was going to be yeah. down. Nice so, trade, no fight on the front side, taking a back side, perfect trade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. In the meantime, over here, still be with us. We have uh, other, uh, some other chart from Bus. Uh, so MTR over here. So seems another uptrending stock. So you can see that uh, Bus loves to short. <laughs> <laughs> Never figured that out. Uh, well, yeah, this everybody is has its uh, niche. So uh, Charlie and I have a some longing, maybe a couple of times in one year. Uh, and instead, bus, he doesn't like shorting. So uh, doesn't doesn't really matter where you make money traders. You can even do only, for example, extensions or whatever faders, as long as you make money. That's the important thing. Yeah. And I, I would say that, you know, I, I just like, I've always liked investing in companies I understand. So that's why I'm on the long side. But you know, with swing, especially you gotta, you gotta know the, when the market's good, that's a key piece, you know, 80% of the stocks will follow. So that's the daily, right? Uh, daily yeah. over here. So this is a, that stock. I know this stock. Well, it's a metaverse play and it was the old SPAC that was GHVI. You probably remember that. Yes. But uh, I, I loaded up a big position because I love the fundamentals. So I have an investment in this company, but I trade on top of it. And I've made a ton of money with options on this chart and, and I, I love it, but especially now because it's in the news, but this is Friday and you know, you can tell I'm super technical, but what I draw those boxes. So I, I take the move from the morning, you get the move. Now, if you look close there, you get the bounce on the nine EMA. So you can actually take that first flag, not where I have the line drawn. Yeah. The, yeah. There's like, that trade I wouldn't really take, but the first pullback there, right there, you can take that off of the white line, which is, that's the 21 EMA on the one minute chart. So I'll take that. And so if you're having trouble with unders overs, I would, I would maybe look at that setup there. And what I'm trying to show you here is so you get this first move. And the reason I like measured moves is it shows you what the stock can do on that day. And if it can do it once, it probably can do it twice. So it's already telling you what kind of power is behind the stock. And then what it does is it goes sideways and they actually had what I thought was bad earnings. And I expected this. I sold a bunch of my investment because I didn't like the earnings. But this is the lesson here is price. Uh, forget about fundamentals, because I mean, I know you use fundamentals in small caps and I use fundamentals for investing, but price is king. Technicals are king. This stock was telling me I wanted higher and I sold some of my investment. I said, I'm going to day trade this thing because price is telling me it's going higher. So what he's showing here, those white boxes are showing me. So the white line shows me the power it has. And then the, the gray rectangle on the left is telling me how long it took to take to make that move. Then what I do is I go, I want a consolidation of about the same time. And then at the bottom, I'm looking for the volume to dry up. You see the volume dries up to nothing where I have that gray they're right there. And it means then we below have no that, and right below that, the 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 uh, study at the bottom is something I made. All that's showing is you the ATR is shrinking, which means price is tightening. And you don't really need that. You just need to look at the price bars. But once you see the volume shrink to nothing, it's going sideways, it's consolidated or digested for the same amount of time that the original move was made, then as soon as I start seeing higher lows there in a three bar cup, you know, I break a three bar high, I kind of use anywhere in there you can get in and then you just take the whole measured move. And, you, and 
there's little flags in there that you could trade if you want, but I usually look at the bigger lines and I'm going for, you know, maybe trading what would be like a five minute chart here. It's a one minute chart, but you know, those moves, you can see the one minute pullbacks and oscillations. This is that idea that the market is fractal, right? If you look at the first move there, you actually see two measured moves inside of that, where I was telling Jay that first entry could be, you got two one minute moves, but these are kind of like three or five minute moves. And so I'm playing, that's kind of how I keep my size. So I put on an options there at 2250s. Yeah, there's a five minute chart. And so you don't see those little oscillations on the five minute chart. And so that I'm looking at a one minute, but I'm really trading a five minute, if you will. I'm looking through the one minute for longer term action. And I'm taking the 2250s here, right when the second move and I'm selling into the measured move. And you get one stock like that with 10, 20, 30 shares on a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, you can make three to $5,000 on a move like that. Not a bad return. The, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to show. But the, so people, oh, one other thing I want to say, people are asking how I manage the options and how I manage the risk. And what I do is I think like Jay, I buy at the money and then I'm looking to add something slightly out of the money, but the out of the money has to be a realistic target. And this is why I love the measured moves for options, especially I can draw the line and go, this is reasonable for today. If you start buying way out of the money options on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're just throwing your money away. It's gotta Absolutely. be reasonable. And so once I get the first move, think of about scaling into a move in the money instead of putting all your risk on at once. Once I get the first move and I'm in the money, I look for a pullback, a normal consolidation, normal price action, then I'll buy the next strike above. And then when I get the second push, I'll sell the original in the money. Now I'm sitting on a big profit. I've taken risk off. And because when you buy the out of the monies on the pullback, they're cheap because they're out of the money. Then you get, if you know anything about uh, deltas and or Greeks, you get the gamma kicking in as you approach 2250 here, and you're 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 increasing your profits exponentially as you push through 2250 on a Friday. So that's kind of how I manage it. So I'm I'm rolling them up. I think Smash trades this way too. You're rolling up the strikes, locking in the profit, and then at some point it becomes risk to zero and you can't lose. Very beautiful explanation over here, trader. So. Try to, this is recorded, try to go back, study it, even for traders that want to improve their skills and they're actually right, uh, trading already uh, big caps and options. Uh, this is a very good lesson, especially, seems uh, uh, silly, simple, but it's not. So wait for that move and then buy options when you have that pullback in that after happened, the strong move. So initiates over here the strong move try to buy them over here don't buy the options on strength because you know what will happen when the stock will have the pullback then the option will have more depreciation over here okay so option especially near the expiration will lose so much in time decay over here he said yes. buy it on the pullback and then when the stock goes up your option will really fly what you have to understand is like on an underlying, uh, say like NVIDIA or one of these liquid big caps, a one to 3% move on a stock like that, a daily option or weekly option is going to have like, you're going to have 30, 40% pullbacks. If you're staring at your PL, it's going to mess with your head too much. So you have to have a system to trade the chart and with the charts broken, then you exit. But if you're staring at your PL, but as you watch more and more options, you're going to see these swings on these options can be crazy. They can be 60% down and then close up 150%, right? So you can't look at the options and the price of the options. I would stick with trading the pattern when the pattern's broken and then trade around a core position of, you know, maybe you can afford one. It's nice if you can afford more than one option so that you can scale and scale out. But when, if you can get an option that's, you know, you can trade something that you can get three to five shares or three to six. I like the multiples of three because I like to trade in thirds. But years, it, yeah. it, it makes it a lot easier when you can scale in and scale out with options. If you can, if like in the early days of Tesla before it split, I think some of the one contract was like $70. You know, it was like crazy to trade Tesla. So look for maybe a liquid stock like Lucid that's trading at 40 bucks and you can buy something at the money for 60 or 80 cents, as opposed to like, I was looking at Upstart yesterday. 
you know, at 3.30, I think the, the weekly options were like $22. And I don't even want to take that kind of risk. You know, for yeah. one contract, you're putting up, you know, 2,000 bucks or something. 1,000 bucks, yeah. Absolutely not. All right, we have uh, traders. Uh, some questions for Bus and Charlie, please, right over here. So let's start with uh, the question we already have. Um, again, I think Charlie already answered. Uh, Techman, Bus, how do you find potential stocks each day? I think that uh, he was talking about, uh, he has a scanner, if, I'm, uh, if I remember correctly, and he's looking for stocks that uh, are uh, having a big move, so they started to make a big move, or they have a potential for big moves. Is it true, uh, Bus? Like yeah, for example, my other webinar, I kind of went through that, but exactly. I just used Toss, exactly. and basically... The easiest way to find strong stocks, there's two things I look for. I look for, I learned this from Chris Cuomaggi. I look for stocks with an average daily range of 4% or more. So it's like small caps. I want something with range. You know, I don't want to trade something that's moving 2% if there's tons of stocks set up moving 4%, right? If you have the same pattern and you got a stock that moves 5% on the day and a stock that moves 2, I'm going to take the one with 5 so I scan, I look for stocks with 4% average daily range a day minimum. And then I have parameters in my scanner that are looking for momentum stocks. And it's real easy to do. All you got to do is have stacked EMAs. And so the ones to use are the nine, the 21 and J line. Say, I want the nine above the 21 above the J lines on a daily. And that's going to give you stocks that move that have high momentum that are market leaders. And those are the ones I focus on. Exactly. So Techman is asking... Uh, this, I believe, for Charlie. Can you give a look at OLB? Uh, yes, buddy. Just one second. I want to take also my trade on OLB if I remember where I posted. Just one second. Uh, OLB, OLB, OLB. We had... Uh, um, was it this? No. Wasn't this. Wasn't this, wasn't this, wasn't this. Okay, I think was uh, this one over here. Boom. All right, so uh, Techman is asking, uh, but here I will read uh, the question. Oil B211, hope seemed like a good gap in crap, but then was very strong. All right, let's also bring up Charlie over here. Charlie, okay, you're with us, buddy. So let's check OLB. Yeah. But that day, traders, we were, I remember that I was looking at stats. I was looking at the dilution. I was looking at the previous, I would say, history of the stock. And this stock had uh, one big day, right? But the volume traded was very small over here. We had a volume around 20 million. Right now, the market is trading two, 300 million volume days. And this was OLB. Uh, let's put a, a one minute chart. Let's put the one minute chart. Let's put back five days. We took this this week. I took like, I remember the day. I even recorded the day. I took uh, 15 shots. Uh, 11 were longs. Uh, two were shorts. And the other two were uh, stops. So I had 13 wins each day trading this all day trading this long the reason why is remember what bus was talking about before about the morning pop fail and reverse okay so that's your bear trap uh bull trap sorry that's your bull trap bull trap in the sense that first they trap bulls over here but then they uh trap bears over here i remember that carfit traded this perfect at that short and he had a very good win and then trilled everything over here before the reclaim of the, the VWAP. Charlie, did you trade this that day? Yeah, I remember. And I remember I didn't trade this one because for me, uh, it's long. And I have no clue to make longs, as I already said. So I tried to avoid this. I, I didn't do, I remember I didn't uh, do this, this stock. Just because uh, because of the price. When I see stocks about 9, 10, 11, I, yeah, exactly. So we had a stock over here, traders, that popped the gate, 
So this is a perfect gap and extension, okay? So pops into the pre-market high. You're looking to short just below. You're using also this level over here of $8 number, okay? So that's also your level, your guide. But then you want to see this unwind going to the one-minute day lines at least. Instead, you see over here that we have a fake breakdown. That is really what scares me. So if I'm short and I see that they're having a breakdown, and over here, they start reclaiming and closing above the 90 May, careful. They close above the VWAP, careful. The volume over here is absurd. So you don't have any more uh, low volume, 500, 600, 400K. You start having over here bars in the one minute chart of almost 2 million volume. And then what they did, they did a trap again, another bull trap. In this case, short sell jumping again because, oh, what? Over here, all shorts, all longs are trapped. So let me short it below the VWAP. This is going to go down. But the volume is still keeping a decent amount of volume over here, okay? They still have a decent amount of volume. And we're still forming higher lows. Again, what they, what they do over here, I took some cuts because I was only looking too long. And uh, I showed this in the room. I was trading this in the room live with you and explain every single thing. And I had one of the best longs uh, of the last two months with size. So you can go check the, the recording video or, or ask me if you need, uh, need more. So over here, I was looking at this curl and I was on the one in five minute chart. And then I saw this topping, what I said, oh, I'm longing because I was waiting over here for a breakout and I was risking this low. I didn't stop. I'm longing more. I was not full size. And then when we had this breakdown, I stopped because I was afraid for a wash. Instead, they did this. They did a fake breakdown of this level. And once I saw that they were reclaiming so fast and volume came in, I longed full size all I had. Loaded the boat. And I took this big win up till here. So it's good to take a cut, protect myself, and then entering big over here. But I was long with flow rotation, a small float, huge amount of volume, holding the open level, and uh, level pre-market highs after 10 o'clock. Reason for me to go long on this, okay? Uh, once we were here, I saw stuff in a couple of times, but I was still not done. I started looking each time for the curls. So over here, another curl, you see over here, another curl. And the 90 May is always pushing up. Also what we saw before, that the faster J lines is above the slower J lines, okay? So you're still riding along. You cannot short something like this with the volume. It simply will, like Charlie said, you know this was a long, you simply avoided this. And then at a certain point, you see that the J lines, they shift. The 72 goes below the 89. And then really the volume, you see, an existence, and you can short me all the pops and make money to the backside. Okay. Is it clear, TG? Exactly. Uh, can we look at ALZN? Was very choppy as well, looks on uh, uh, TPTI. Charlie, did you trade buddy ALZN? I don't even remember where I had uh, breakfast, but... Uh, was yesterday, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> uh, 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 no idea. I don't remember. But I have uh, some levels, but no, I, did, I think I didn't, I didn't do that one. Okay. No. So I can talk over here about ALZN. So the first thing I do each morning, I'm going to bring it up, traders. I go right away to see my edge. Edge is ready for now, for now, okay? It's already four months, I'm saying. So four, four months, you're having this free. So uh, Chris Sari is uh, uh, finalizing this and is the best app out there. So we're trying to make the best possible app around. So I start looking at the statement, why is up? So they had a form four. We go to see over here, they acquire 100K over here. Um, 100,000, sorry, of uh, shares. And who acquired them? The director, okay? Then you go check 
the stats. So we have a 50 million float. So we don't have a market a small uh, float. 50 million is pretty good for a small cap. We have also 6% institutional ownership, which is pretty low. We have no SSR. I go to check the financials and I want to see, do they need cash badly or is it pretty good? They have 50 million cash. They're, ha they're having a negative net income uh, and they're burning uh, 400K per month. So basically they're going to have cash at least for 20 plus months. I go to history, I go to gap stats. We only had one gap, which is this one over here that it faded. So I don't really have a reliability, um, reliable, sorry, amount of stats that tell me I have to short this. Then I go to check with dilution tracker. I put over here uh, ALZN and it doesn't have anything that I would need to uh, know. So what happens over here in the morning when I put when they push it's 9:30 right they right away extend and there's no setup for me to shore with this huge amount of volume. Yesterday I was calling that 350 because at 350 we had a daily resistance uh, and also we don't need any kind of uh, we don't know about dilution I didn't go check but I can tell you that the company doesn't need immediate cash. So two main things tell me already not to short. Also, we don't have a very huge amount of bag holders in this one. So what I will look is only to trade these longs or if this goes crazy bar parabolic, sorry, to take it short. One thing you have to check over here, how is the volume massive? Faders will have volume three, four, 500, 600K per minute. You cannot short something that has 1 million volume per minute. Also, this is the mid-morning trap that we always see. What they do, they fail the VWAP on purpose. They go to the Zealand. So that's the reason why small cap room traders are in advantage versus the normal traders, because we're not looking at the VWAP. We're looking at the J lines. And if you are with me over here, you'll buy the J lines. You'll buy that curl over here, this, and don't care about the VWAP. Use the VWAP only to know where what other traders are looking at. But you're ahead of the game. You're longing where they're stopping. And why are you longing? Because you have a lot of volume over here. And then where you sell into your heat map resistance, because this 320 yesterday was a huge heat map resistance. Uh, my system tells me to not go short on this until it goes crazy parabolic or has a big 350 stop. Never had it. So for me, no trade. I was simply waiting yesterday to trade something like this. And then over here in the afternoon, what they did, they trapped more short sellers because they made them seem this was going to fail. And this is a five minute J line. That's the first main target. So if you trade it with our fail, you see over here, we have the 72 below the 89. And over here, the 72 is above the 89. So the bright is above the dark. And over here, the bright is below the dark. So the trend changes. So you can take the short and you're still a winner, but then becomes lateral like this. So when I have no high forecast for short, I'm not really looking to trade this short, okay? Is it clear, buddy? Uh, Jack is asking over here and none of it. Uh, none of it, use bookmap to decide for your exit. I personally use bookmap to decide my exit. Uh, but also use parameters together like 90 May trailing and uh, uh, if I'm shorting a set of lower highs. Uh, guys, Bas, uh, Charlie, what do you use to get out? Me? You know me. I'm Mr. Measured Move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you already explained that. And you, Charlie? 200 Emma is like a um, golden rule for me, one minute. Some percentage of my size, uh, then I'm waiting for the 200 demo, uh, five minutes. And sometimes I give a small portion for the 15 minutes 200 demo. But I must say that the 200 demo on the five for me is like a 90% all out. Okay. Because many, many times it's pushing from there. So we have solid yeah. stats traders that the five minutes aliens at 20 million, the five is the main target. Yeah. Jack over here is asking, Jay, when you talk about loading the boat, how much percent of size of your account? Basically, 
I trade multiple accounts, so I try to load them all. Uh, another question, uh, Jay, can you talk about how not to anticipate J-line rejection? Okay, I explain it this way. Uh, we're going to the station, and I already uh, wrote this uh, somewhere. You're uh, at the station, train station, and the train has arrived in about five minutes. And you know that when the train arrives, you have to jump in, okay? You have two minutes to jump in, so it's pretty fast. But if you stay in front of the train uh, before you arrive, so you stand there, you will be run over. Instead, you wait, it stops, and then you get in. It's the same thing with the J-lines. If you take the, tra the, the train before the train stop, the, the train will simply kill you. You don't know if the train will stop there or that's another train that is going to another destination. So you have to wait that the train stops. Train stops, you get in. Train doesn't stop, you don't get in. Dot. Uh, general, uh, when managing position size risk, do you base on total capital in all your broker account combined or base only on the account you're trading with? I let Bus uh, answer this. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, it's, you know, I'm trading all kinds of stuff and I have multiple accounts like Jay. I have a really big investment slash position trade account. Then I have like a medium size account for swing and I have a day trade account. And sometimes I'll swing some options in that too. So it kind of crosses over. What, what I try to do, and I know it's different than, you know, the way Jay trades and a lot of people in the room, everyone's got to find what works for them, but you, know, you need some sort of risk management. What I try to do is, you know, start small, work into some winners, get, make sure the market's working for me, make sure my recent trades are working for me. And then when I get in the money big, then I really lever up and I, I take some take on some big risks when I'm already have a lot of profits. So let's say I'm up 40, 50 grand on an investment type stock and it sets up technically in the short term, then I'm going to come in with heavy options like, you know, three, five, 10,000 uh, shares or, you know, 100 contracts on top of where I'm already in the money. And then if I see day trade setups, I'll add more weekly options on top of that. So I have really short dated options on top of kind of weekly or two weeks out options on stocks that I've already up on. And so it's all risk management because if I lose, it's money that I've already made. So I'm risking profits. That's where I'm taking big size. I'm not coming in with massive size trying to make $100,000 when I haven't made any money. So a, you got to know what kind of trader you are. B, I think Jay will tell you, you need to separate your accounts from a psychological standpoint. Absolutely. Don't mix your swing and your investment, all those accounts. And I didn't do that at first, and I learned the hard way. And when you enter trades, you have to know, is this a day trade? Is it a swing trade? Is it an investment? I talk to a lot of guys that kind of on the side like to talk about investments with me. And you have to know in your mind what it is. You don't want to turn a day trade into an investment. You don't want to be trapped. And so I have basically an investment account where I know companies really well. And then I like to trade on top of those names because I figure the more edges you can line up, the better. But all of that combined is kind of, uh, I, like to, I like to get to the point where I'm in the money, I can't lose and then lever up and risk some of those profits aggressively. That's kind of the way I trade. So it's portfolio risk management. It's understanding which types of trades you're taking and separating the accounts. And then on options, I mentioned this in the room. I have a $100,000 account that I use for options and day trading. I don't like to put on more than 10% premium of that account at any given time. So if I have a $100,000 account, I don't want to carry premium on a weekly basis. I'll usually spread up to $10,000 of the $100,000 across two to four names. Some of them are going to be losers. Some of them are going to be big winners. And I'm just trying to make headway every week. But I'm not going to put on 100,000, you know, 25% across the board in four names and risk 100,000 on weekly options. You're going to blow yourself up. So the point is you got to try to get to where you're, you're aggressive when the market's right and you're making money. Don't take on a lot of risk until you're, it's working. And you have to monitor the stuff. And I'm not the best tracker, but I'm, I trade so often and I'm watching my overall portfolio. I know where I'm at and I know where I'm not doing well, but I'm, I don't do it as precisely as people in the room. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just doing what works for me. And so that, that's how I control risk across different types of investment, different types of accounts. But I'm keeping in mind how much risk. And a lot of times I'm if I find a better setup, I'm selling something else that hasn't broken down. I'm not... Like Chris Cuomaggi will keep adding stocks and he'll get 20, 30, 40 stocks going at once when the market's hot. 
I'm sometimes selling something that I feel like is not as good. And then what happens, sometimes you're wrong and that stock rips and that kind of happens, but that's risk management. I just get over it and say, hey, that's protecting my portfolio. Yeah, that's a pretty good explanation. Charlie, you want to add something? No, I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know Charlie. I know him very good. So traders, uh, first of all, uh, this is recorded. Let me tell you, thank you, uh, Charlie, Bus, Eric, for today, for being here. Uh, we're building a good team. If you like the team, remain with us. Help us building it. And uh, take your lifetime uh, license in the room. Reach out if you need help. And uh, have a blessed weekend. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Bus, Charlie, and Eric. Thank you again, guys. Thanks, Jay. Take care, guys. Thank you. See you, Charlie.